The Rise of Satellite Communications You've probably heard about SpaceX Starlink or NASA's Apollo satellite, but have you ever wondered how satellite communications are able to transmit data around the globe? Satellite communications have evolved from the first satellite launch in 1957 to the complex network of geostationary and low Earth orbit satellites of today. Discover the secrets behind this technology and take a look at the amazing world of satellite communications in this video. The use of satellites to communicate, internet access, and remote sensing has increased exponentially over the last few decades, giving us new possibilities for accessing information and communicating. Let us explore the history and applications of satellite communications from their earliest beginnings to the present day. The history of satellite communications started with an article titled Extraterrestrial Relays published by A.C. Clark in 1945. He stated that an object can continue to move in an orbit around the Earth as long as the gravitational force between the object and the Earth is counterbalanced by the centripetal force on the object in orbit. Centripetal force is defined as the force acting on an object to keep it moving in a circular pattern, and it increases with the square of velocity. Sputnik 1 was launched by the Soviet Union in 1957, marking the beginning of satellite communications. Thus, space exploration and communications entered a new era. The Telstar-1 satellite was launched shortly thereafter, in 1962. The first commercial broadcast of television signals across the Atlantic Ocean was made possible by this satellite. In addition to a wide spectrum of applications, satellite communications are primarily used for TV broadcasting and access to the Internet. The only way to access the Internet in some remote parts of the world is through satellite-based Internet connections. Additionally, satellite Internet is an excellent option for those who frequently travel, since it is less susceptible to service interruptions. A satellite communication system is composed of a ground-based transmitter, a ground-based receiver, and a satellite. A satellite also has a transmitter, a receiver, an amplifier, and a solar panel that generates the electric power needed by the spacecraft. Uplink and downlink frequencies are chosen sufficiently far from each other so as to minimize interference between them. A bent pipe satellite receiver receives an uplink signal, frequency converts to the downlink frequency, amplifies and transmits back to Earth without demodulating. The so-called regenerative satellites carry out onboard demodulation and modulation as well. Modulation involves varying the characteristics of a radio frequency carrier wave so as to transmit information, such as voice, data, and video, on the wave. Demodulation refers to recovering the data from the modulated signal. Satellites may be characterized by the height of their orbits from the surface of the Earth. Geostationary satellites are located 36,000 kilometers above the Earth's surface and are seen as stationary for a user on Earth since they complete one tour around the Earth in one day. Geosatellites have very large coverage areas. Three geosatellites spaced 120 degrees from each other on the equatorial orbit can have global coverage. At these orbital heights, signal attenuation is very high and signal delay may be unacceptably long for voice communications. They generally require high transmit powers. Geosatellites are mainly used for telecommunications and radio and TV broadcasting. Low Earth orbiting satellites are used for internet traffic, remote sensing, and military applications. Internet services are mostly provided to users on Earth by large constellations of LEO satellites with altitudes below typically 1,000 km. As the satellites orbit closer to Earth, they have to move faster to increase the centripetal force so as to compensate for the increase in gravitational force. Then, the satellites will be visible to users on Earth for shorter durations, and received signals will experience higher Doppler frequency shifts due to higher satellite velocities. These satellites are cheaper because they do not have much protection and weigh only several hundred kilograms. Thousands of LEO satellites are needed for global coverage since LEO satellites can have small coverage areas. Since LEO satellites are not stationary with respect to Earth's surface, and they have very large speeds, a LEO satellite can serve an individual user on the Earth's surface for a relatively short duration of time. However, as the satellite handling the traffic approaches the horizon, the traffic may be handed over to the next satellite approaching the user. Large numbers of LEO satellites evenly spaced in orbits with different inclinations ensure continuous global coverage at all times. All users on Earth's surface can then be served by at least one satellite at any time. They are especially useful in geographic areas not covered by cellular networks, as well as during natural disasters and war when cellular networks are disabled. 
Constellation of LEO satellites in inclined orbits can also provide global coverage including oceans, forests, deserted areas, and mountainous regions, which are not covered by cellular systems. Additionally, satellite communications may play an imperative role in mobile communications. Studies are underway in order to provide a direct connection between cell phones and LEO satellites in such areas. Through specially designed terminals, individual users can directly connect to satellite communication systems such as Iridium, Global Star, and Inmarsat. The Starlink system of SpaceX does not directly connect from its satellites to cell phones. Instead, it is linked to transportable user terminals, equipped with phased array antennas that can track the satellites. Phased array is a computer-controlled antenna array that creates a beam that can be electronically steered in different directions. A user terminal equipped with a phased array can then track an LEO satellite as it orbits within the region of visibility on Earth's surface. Because of focusing the array beam in the direction of the satellite, the use of phased arrays ensures communications at higher data rates. In some systems, inter-satellite links are used for coordination between satellites in orbits. The frequencies used for inter-satellite links are chosen so that they can neither be intercepted nor be jammed from the Earth's surface. Astronomical communities have raised concerns about the light pollution caused by the large satellite constellations on ground-based astronomy, which requires protection against light pollution and radio interference. Scientists are beginning to explore how satellite communications can be further developed and improved now that satellite communications are deeply integrated into our lives. Different nations have their own GPS systems, such as the US GPS, Galileo of the European Union, GLONASS of Russia, the Chinese Beidou, and QZSS of Japan. These systems use satellites for global navigation, enabling us to develop an accurate, global navigation system that is not constrained by national boundaries. As a result of global coverage, it is necessary for all participating nations to agree on orbital locations, frequency allocations, and other operating parameters. Therefore, satellite communication systems are subject to international regulations, such as those issued by the International Telecommunication Union. For the foreseeable future, satellite communications will continue to play an important role in our daily lives, providing us with a global connection that is essential for our survival. Keep up with the latest breakthroughs in information and communications technology, subscribe today and stay ahead of the curve.